You're listening to the Guess of My Soapbox podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We want to make the world a better place and share life-educated opinions and have discussions on various topics. Welcome your host. He is a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, and always wants to know, how's your integrity today? Mad Morgan! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, welcome to episode 18 of Get Off My Soapbox. Hey, I'm your host, Mad Morgan, and thank you for joining me for Wednesday evening's long format show of Get Off My Soapbox. Thanks very much for tuning in today. Always nice to have you here for our longer show. We get a little more in depth on things when it comes to our show. How's your week been? How's your etiquette? How has been your integrity? How has been your social graces? Yes, I'm going to ask you three things. Usually I only ask you about your etiquette. Nope, actually, I only ask you about your social graces. Nope. Actually, I only ask you about your integrity, but they all go kind of hand in hand. But let's just let's get things off straight. How's your integrity been this week? How's your integrity been today? Are you being the positive change? Are you being the positive change the world needs? Hey, only you will know onwards and upwards. Now, as far as those other two topics go, that is what our show is about today. Our topic for this week's show is crucial social etiquette rules everyone should follow. That is our topic for today. Crucial social etiquette rules everyone should follow. And I guess what inspired this particular topic for this week was something that I've seen a few times as far as um, life goes. And we're going to get right into it today. But before, let's just a quick little reminder. Please check out getoffmysoapbox.com and the FAQs. All the information about all our shows are on there and keep you up to date with local news and events and things that are happening coming down the road. And before I, of course, get into the show, this is probably going to be the last week we're going to do the video component of Get Off My Soapbox, only because, as I mentioned, and it's also reflected in the FAQs on getoffmysoapbox.com, the time consumption and everything else, and we need more sponsors. We need more support. So please feel free to assist if you can over at Patreon. Also, you can find those links on getoffmysoapbox.com. Until we can hire somebody to free up that time, that's just something we can't do. And so for the time being until we actually get some uh, financial assistance or some sponsors we're going to cut the video component of get off my soapbox down the road once we actually get some um, some support we will bring back the video components for get off my soapbox because we can actually hire somebody to be able to make those on a weekly basis but just so you know the monday to friday soapbox daily videos will be created because they're much shorter and that could be definitely doable as far as time goes but uh right now this is going to be last last week we're going to do the video component of get off my soapbox so just to give you a heads up in case you go over to twitch or youtube and go hey where are the get off my soapbox videos Well, they're not there. (laughs) And I'll probably do a follow-up video, or or, sorry, a follow-up on that as a reminder, just in case people go venturing over there going, hey, where'd it go? So that's about it as far as that goes. Let's get into today's topic. Now, the other two things I mentioned was social graces and etiquette. And here is where this comes from. I mean, we all have seen this in our life. We've been in social situations. We have seen the way people act. Some people are a little uncouth with the way they go about doing stuff. And uncouth, well, well, I'm not going to explain that. They're just, it's like they haven't been taught the basics of social graces and etiquette, the stuff that should be taught to you as a child. If you don't teach it as a child, it doesn't become routine. It doesn't become habits. And if it doesn't become habits, people don't know this. So when they actually get into polite company in situations, they don't know any different that their behavior is not correct, is not proper, is not polite. And so I encourage parents to at least, if you're going to do any sort of parenting with your kids, at least teach them proper social etiquette. I'm going to combine these social etiquette because it's important because you can really see stuff that when people haven't been brought up right and haven't been raised correctly and haven't been course corrected as far as social graces and etiquette. And don't get me wrong. And let's just correct this. It's not a snobbish behavior. It's not I'm better than you behavior. It's not anything along those lines. It is actually having a sense of decency for other people as well as presenting yourself in the best light. I mean, people are always demanding false respect for no reason whatsoever, but respect is earned. And that's usually earned by your 
actions, not by your words. You can talk a little tough or you can talk whatever you want and talk a good game. It's your actions that earn the respect. It's the way you treat other people is what earns you the respect. So I'm going to give you some points. I'm going to point out some social graces and etiquette that if you do them, that if you do follow these steps as far as social etiquette, social grace goes, then you will be perceived in better light. If you And to hopefully get you to not do the bad portion of this. So I'm going to give you what you should do or should not do, but take it in the fact that I'll explain it as each one goes along just so you have a better idea. But let's start with... There's, as I said, there's, there's a bunch of them here. I'm going to go through them pretty quick. So let's just get on with this. So some of them are pretty self-explanatory, but let's, let's, let's get on to this. So number one, offer up your seat. If you're in perfectly good health, if you are in perfectly good health, offer your seat to anyone who is either in poor health or pregnant. It's just common sense. Be a decent person. They're having difficulty standing for whatever reason. Give your seat up. That's proper manners and that's proper etiquette. Uh, avoid manspreading. Now, manspreading. I don't know how people think that this is something that's considered attractive or considered arousing. Like what guys completely sprawl out, legs wide open. It looks repulsive. And this is coming from me, who's a guy. And it looks repulsive. And I don't know of one woman, or furthermore, lady, that would look at that and go, wow, oh, look at that. No, I, I don't know one woman yet that I've met that actually considers that attractive and manly. Furthermore, it's even worse when women do it. It's like, come on, it's not an equal opportunity thing here, people. You know, cons be conservative about, don't spread your legs out and show everything because nobody is interested in that. Be conscious of how you're sitting, especially while you're commuting. Okay, three, let's uh, let your waiter come to you. Never yell or wave at waiter. Waiters is a tough business. It's a tough job to be in. Wait for them to come to you. They're probably very busy. Probably have 10 other tables they have to take care of or 10 other patrons. Just let them come to you. There's another one. Know your audience. Be aware who's around you before engaging in hot topics. You never know who's listening. You don't know if it's your boss. You don't know if it's somebody that knows your boss. You don't know if it's somebody that whatever you're talking about might get back to the person. So be a little careful about knowing your audience. That's always a good thing to be aware of your surroundings, especially when you start yapping up stuff that you don't want everybody to know about. Here's another one that goes hand in hand with the waiter. Make sure to tip. Now here's the thing about tipping, which seems to be on the rise since the COVID years. Now we've got back to regular life. People are demanding tips, which, you know, Make sure to tip. In the service industry, that's how they make their paycheck. That is important. Tipping is very important. This is everything from casino dealers to waiters to waitresses. You name it. If they're serving you, they're in the service industry. If they're providing you either entertainments or a meal or drinks, th that is hard work and they need a tip. They need a tip for the good service. If they give you good service, make sure to tip them and make sure to tip them fairly. No, don't be a Scrooge. Don't be skingy. You, if you've never, if you've done the job, you understand. You understand how important it is. If you've never done the job, then maybe you should learn how to do a hard day's work, or a real, honest, good day's work, and then work in the service industry for a day, and you'll see how hard it is. Okay, um, people are always another one is people are always not being polite when they bump into people. They're just pushing through like a bull in a china shop. It, it, say excuse me. The polite thing to do when you bump into somebody, say excuse me. Even if you're not the one to blame, just try to avoid conflict and brush and brush off the situation. But just say excuse me. It's just a social grace that basically just diffuses the situation, doesn't escalate, makes everybody feel good. It's not a weaker thing. It's actually being the higher person. Use a coaster. Yeah, okay. That's subject to, of course, what you're putting stuff on, but it's usually a nice way to avoid, uh, you know, condensation on a table or a surface. Say please and thank you. Not too hard to say it, especially to those that are the closest to you. Please and thank you. Very basics. Nothing wrong with saying it. It makes you look good. Smile. Smile goes a long way. Smile at everybody. Cashier, bank teller, coworker. Even if they don't smile back, believe it or not, that smile does so much. It goes the distance. It really does. 
How about this one? I know we've all, all, all had this one. Hold the door for the person behind you. Takes you two seconds. I've seen so many rude teenagers do that. And like, wow, I want to smack them and go, well, you never taught any manners. It takes two seconds to hold a door for somebody. Phone calls. Well, I know phone calls aren't a very common thing these days. Most people are using their phones for everything but calls. But if you do answer a phone call, take it outside so everybody doesn't have to hear your, your conversation. You can take it outside of earshot for everybody else so they can engage whatever they're doing and then you can have your conversation. You know, it's just common courtesy. A little bit of etiquette there. Okay. How about this one? People are having a bad day. People all have bad days. We all have bad days. Give people a pass. That's what I'm saying. Give people a pass. Cranky salesperson, nasty driver. Okay, you have no idea what's going on with that person right now. You don't know what's going on in their life. Do they get bad news? Who knows? But once in a while, give them give them a pass. Doesn't mean they're in your face. Doesn't mean they mean anything against you. Sometimes people are just having a bad day. Better off, just try to be a little empathetic. Understand. How about, here's another thing. I, my, my daughter's worse for this. Looking at people who are speaking to you. Now, this is really difficult because everybody's zombies and everybody's looking at their stupid phones. Look at who is speaking to you. Stop looking at your phone. Stop looking at your feet. Look at who is speaking to you. Eye contact. How about hand in hand, of course, with the door holding? How about letting somebody go in front of you in line? You'd be surprised how that makes somebody's day. Because, you know, maybe it's an errand. Maybe it's just groceries. Like, what if you go and you have a shopping cart full of groceries and the person behind you only has one item? Really, it takes, what, a minute or two to run that person through? But it really is a nice gesture to other people. It's good etiquette. Coughing and sneezing, especially after COVID, especially with when COVID was happening. Sneeze into your elbow. I know, I know, but you don't want it flying all over the place unless you have a Kleenex. Sneeze into your elbow. Uh, okay, so here's another one. Handwrite thank you notes. Not everybody has the skills to write, believe it or not. But if you do have the skills to write, you know, actually write a letter and your grammar and spelling are correct because let's face it, if you saw a text these days and all the communications online, it's pretty sad. People can't spell and use grammar, but you know what? If you really want to make an impact, handwrite your thank you notes. Uh, I'm going to wrap up the whole smartphone thing. Smartphones should not be at the dinner table. Smartphones should be away during meals. Put the smartphones away. If somebody's talking to you, look up from the smartphone. Leave it alone. Phones are not making you smart. They're making you stupid. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, here's one. And I get this, of course, when I'm walking my dog. Clean up after your pets. We do it. I do it. You're supposed to do it. Your dog poops, pick it up. Plain and simple. Clean up after your pet. It's your pet, your responsibility. It's finable, by the way. Most people, most places is actually a law that you have to pick up after your animal. Um, oh, yeah. You know what's really bad in the service industry? People just showing up and demanding a seat, like especially restaurants. RSVP. RSVP whether or not it's going to a restaurant. RSVP if you're going to anywhere that might have limited capacity, but at least it's a nice gesture in the fact that you're at least saying you're definitely going to be there. So I'm going to reserve it ahead of time. Another thing. How about curb your potty mouth? Because these days... So much vulgarity flies around. So much swear words. It's unbelievable. So much trash slang crap that goes around. It's just incredible. And you know that just makes you look so bad. It really does. But really, would it be something you'd want your grandparents to hear? Would it be something you want your parents to hear? Or your kid? Either way, swear words aren't emphasizing your greatness. They're actually emphasizing you're an imbecile. They really, unless it's absolutely needed, 
fine. To an expression, I can understand that, but to use it just for the sake of using it, just, you know, have a little class. Have a little class, put the, put the swearing away. There's no need for it. So keep that in mind when you choose your vocabulary, especially treat, street slang. I'm sorry, it doesn't make you sound cool. It really makes you sound stupid. Uh, work. Oh, this one's good. Keep the noise down at work. COVID for me has been a blessing because at the office for the longest time, I was working with idiots. I really was. Noisy, young kids, 20, early 20-somethings, and they were just loud and noisy and partying it up. And I'm like, wow, I know this is your first job, but there's an etiquette that is required at work. And what if it is for you to keep the noise down? Keep the noise down at work. People are trying to work. You might not have pride in your job. You might not have any work ethic, but other people do. So keep the noise down at work, okay? People are trying to work, trying to focus. Okay, let's see here. How about don't bring your smelly food to the office? You might like it at home. You might like the smell of it. Other people might not. Leave your smelly food at, at, at home. Don't bring it to the office. We don't need we don't need it. We don't need it. Or eat it in a confined area in the actual break room, not at your desk. So everybody else doesn't have to, because it might turn some people off. Speaking of which, dress. Dress for the occasion. Now here's a big thing, and I'm constantly having this fight with my kid. Dressing for the occasion. No to rock it for the club. Or dress modestly for a funeral. But please, please wear your PJs at home, not to the grocery store. Furthermore, look at the events. Look at where you're going and dress appropriately. PJs are designed to be at home, not... Out. Okay, think about this. So you wear PJs out, you go on public transportation. Lord knows what's on those seats. You get on your PJs and everything else. You're going to track that home and then you're going to go to bed in those PJs? Ooh, yuck gag me that's just nasty but furthermore dress for the occasion you're not gonna wear you know some club outfit to into a funeral and, and you're not going to i mean just dress appropriately and for and i hate to say this for the women some of you have to drive, dress, cover up a little more okay you don't need to have everything hanging out and you don't need to define every curve into your body there's time and place for that, but have a little modesty, you know? Uh, driving, 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 driving. Yes, yes, use your turn signal. is proper road etiquette. It's not just courteous. It also helps avoid accidents. And guess what? It's the law, too. So many idiot drivers out there I see with that. Washing your hands after the bath, using the bathroom. Another important thing. Do you really want what you were doing in the bathroom and touching to be on your food and everywhere else? That's just nasty. Wash your hands after you use the washroom. Speaking of shopping and shopping carts, here's a few things when it comes to shopping carts. You know what? When you're shopping, a couple of things here. You know how you drive on which side of the road you drive on? It's kind of the same side that you should be driving down the actual aisles. Consider the aisles in a grocery store or any store like the lanes of traffic, okay? Like a street, like a two-way street. Just look at it that way. It's a two-way street. Stay to your side. People stay to their side. But, you know, depending on where you are in the world, stay on your side of the street, the correct side, okay? You don't be all over the place. Don't park your cart in the middle of the, the aisle. Other people are shopping too. It's not just you. Proper courtesy and etiquette when it comes to talking to somebody especially if you're younger talking to somebody that's older yes we have a super casual society but it's never wrong to use a title it's never wrong to use a title until you know what the person prefers like always ask you could use somebody's first name and it's always polite to ask if that's okay otherwise refer to them as mr or miss or whatever they prefer I think that's just better, especially when it's younger talking to older. A little respect for your elders. Clean up after yourself. I'm on my daughter for this one all the time. So even even if you're an adult, if you're at work, at home, at a friend's house, clean up after yourself. It's your mess. It's not anybody else's mess. It's your mess. 
Come on now. Clean up after yourself. We expect somebody else to wait on you? No, 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 no. It's your mess. You clean it up. Oh, here's another one when it comes to online and social media. How about waiting a day before reacting to a snarky email or text? We all know it's tempting to slam the person immediately, but that often backfires. I've done this. I throw gosh into the wind and then I hear about it from my wife because she reads it <laughs> and I get in trouble afterwards. But yeah, uh, sometimes it's wait, just wait. Sometimes a snap reaction is not a good thing. Just wait, be patient, come back to it in a day and then decide whether or not you still want to reply with that witty comment. Table manners. Now here's one. How about pushing your chair in when you leave a table? Don't make somebody else do it. It's your chair. It's only polite. It makes it easier for people to get around. How about excusing yourself when you get up from the table during a meal? Or even in general, if you're with a company, excusing yourself. It's really simple to do. Excuse me for a sec. I'll be right back. It's a simple social grace. It's really simple. How about if you're going somewhere? How about asking before you bring a guest? I've had, so this, I've, I've had a friend of mine do this to me and it really annoyed the hell out of me. So a buddy of mine that I've known forever, I invited him over. And the understanding was he was coming over to just help me do some repairs around the house. He shows up and he brought his wife. And I'm like, uh, and what do you do in that situation? And you're like dumbfounded. You're not expecting your wife to entertain his wife, but he brought his wife. And I'm like, dude, but you know, what are you going to say? Why the hell did you bring your wife? Really uncomfortable situation. It really made everybody's plans for that day change, right? Couldn't just leave uh, her, his wife to do nothing and sit and watch us work. So yeah, always ask before you bring a guest to anything. Wait until everyone has been served before you're starting to eat, no matter how much you want to dig in. My kid's worse for this one. But... Thankfully, we've got her to the point of actually asking, but it's only polite to wait till everybody's got their food, everybody's sitting down, everybody's ready to go, and then start eating. A few th reasons this is good. That way you don't finish before everybody else does and you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs, but also the whole thing about eating and talking, communicating, and enjoying each other's company is a lot more enjoyable when we're all, you're all engaging in the same activity. And also be a good dinner to guest. I mean, certainly, if you have food allergies, you can mention it ahead of time. The last thing they want to do is, you know, serve you something that's going to actually kill you. But if you don't like a certain food as well, you know, probably slightly mention it. You don't have to get there and mention it in front of everybody else. Otherwise, you're biting your tongue and you're going to have to eat it. But don't expect your host or hostess to make you a special dish. Just, you know... Slightly mention it ahead of time or suck it up and deal with it. But it's a good thing to try to give them a heads up. Try to be a good dinner guest. When you're sick, stay home. I know a lot of us are still staying home after COVID, but when you're sick, stay home. Some things like your cold should not be shared. We don't want your cold. And you, you are going to be a point that's going to affect other people. It's like a domino effect. If it's one to the other to the next, stay home. Ah, here's another one. Knock before you enter. Nobody likes to be barged in on, and you don't know what they're doing. Just knock. A quick little, you know, hello. Takes two seconds. And it's it's courteous to the other person on the other side in case they didn't lock the door or they're engaged in something that, you know, you should not be privy to. Remember table manners, back to the actual dinner table. Let's go with that. Napkin on your lap, Noah, both on the table, and chew with your mouth closed. That shows real class when you put the nap in there. Don't put the elbows on the table. You put the cell phone away. You chew with your mouth closed. You use the proper utensils. It's not hard to learn and it looks classy, let me tell you. How about, again, with putting other people before you, how about letting people get off the elevator before you get on? Same rules go for trains and buses. I mean, it's a lot easier if you coordinate it. Obviously, if these things stop, people are potentially going to get off. And it's a lot easier for you to get on if you're not hitting other people trying to get off. You know, it just it's just simple, simple common sense. 
lead by example. That's why I always say, how's your etiquette? Be the positive example, because lead by example is always a good thing. Good manners you could teach others, you could teach your kids, but you got to do them yourself. How about something on the compassionate side? How about help somebody who's clearly struggling? The next time you see somebody is straining to reach something on the highest shelf at the grocery store, help them out. Takes two seconds, but you know what? It makes a world of difference for that person. How about thanking somebody that has served people? Like for instance, a veteran. How about a police officer? How about a fireman? How about just somebody that's sweeping the street? Thank them. Why not thank them? Those are tough jobs and they are serving the, the public. Thank them. How about when you go out to like say the club? Uh, exercise club, your exercise gym. You know, you sweat, you stinky, everything else. Why not wipe down the exercise machines after you use them? Takes two seconds, towel, just wipe it. And usually most of the exercise clubs, uh, the gyms and everything else have towels for you to do this. But it's a little, they, they, people don't want your sweat. They don't have to sit on your sweat and touch your sweat and everything else. Have a nice gesture of just wiping it down. Oh, shopping carts. Again, another good etiquette. And actually, there, there's a little write-up on this. There's a psychological study on this. People who actually take their shopping carts back to the corral or back to the store entrance. It says a lot about a person that actually takes the time to return the cart versus just laying it, letting it float around the driveway and uh, the parking lot endlessly. It says a lot about a person. Take it back to the corral. It takes two seconds. But I'll tell you, it speaks volumes about you. Yes, grooming, grooming, grooming. Now, certain things should be kept behind closed doors, kept behind closed doors, and one of them is grooming. Don't clip your nails, don't brush your hair, or floss your teeth in public because it's just gross. That's proper hygiene that should be kept. Uh, take it to the bathroom. Take it to the bathroom. We don't need to see this. Even take it to your car when people can't really see you. But yeah, don't do it in public. It's just gross. It really is. It turns people off. How about to say you're sorry? That's another hard thing for people because people always want to be considered tough and, and strong and not weak. And they think that saying sorry is a weakness. No, it's not actually. It's more strength than you will know. And you probably know because it's hard for you to say. But be the bigger person. Learn to say you're sorry. It's a simple gesture. And it makes a big difference. It really does. How about when you enter a room? When you enter a room, greet everybody. No one likes to be ignored. Include everybody. Include everybody. Say, hey, I'm here. How's it going? And, you know, even if you just address it, hey, everybody, how's it going? Or even call them by name. It makes a big difference. People like to be made to feel special, and that will do it. And I guess the last thing is, is if you have a house guest or you are a house guest, well, if you are a house guest, be an, a pleasant house guest. Don't monopolize the bathroom. Take your hosts or hosts out to dinner, hostess or host, maybe a gift later. You know, simple things like that. I could go on. There's a lot of different areas of, of, of social etiquette that and it's just common sense. It's common courtesy. How can I sum it up in the sense that Treat others as you'd want to be treated on the reverse role. But that's what it comes down to. How do you want to be treated? Do you want to be treated with respect and decency? Or do you, do you, not, do you want to be treated like, like crap? Like that's the thing that gets me. If you, you got to look at it in that way. How do you want to be treated? Then great. And that's what you should do. That's what you should do. And I can go with a lot of other examples, but these are some things that I, I compiled when it comes to that. But I'm going to sum up some things that you should definitely teach your kids. I mean, if you're adults and you went through that last list and you don't do a portion of those, maybe you have to rethink your life. But as kids, here's some things for you parents out there that you should teach your kids. And maybe some of you adults should take a take notes on these as well, because these are some basics. It's not a very long list, but I'm going to go over some key elements of stuff that you should focus on. If that other list was too long for you, these are the ones that you should focus on. And these are things you should teach your kids, probably learn yourself. Okay. Eye contact is important. Maintaining eye contact is very important. It not only shows respect for the person you're talking to, it also shows that you are interested in the topic they are talking about. Avoid interrupting. Interrupting is a form of selfishness. 
If children are under the impression that interrupting conversations is okay, they'll believe that it's okay for their needs to surpass others all the time. Basic conversation skills are a fundamental part of communication. Children and adults should know how to take turns in a conversation, when to listen to what the other person is saying, when to respond appropriately, how to stay on topic, and how to read nonverbal cues like body language. You, you, you have to pay attention to the conversation. You have to pay attention to the other people around you. Social graces involve being present at that moment. You, you have to be involved in order to follow the cues and, and, and do some politeness and show some etiquette. Body language, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, nonverbal cues during a situation that includes body language. I mean, you, you have to read body language. It's imperative that you understand that our bodies reflect our attitude. Look for cues on body language and watch your own body language because it speaks volumes and people can pick up on these things. Introduction skills, teach, you know, teach your children, but also learn yourself how to introduce yourself politely, clearly, because it, 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 it teaches how to be confident and self-assured. Let's see what else we can get into. I think the rest I've already covered in the other. Oh yeah, last on that one, I'm gonna say inclusion. Make sure to include other people. It's not all about you. It's not all about the people that you know, but try to include everybody when you're in a social situation. It's just a good thing to do because it makes everybody feel needed. Otherwise people get disgruntled on that. Try to include everybody, especially if you're in a big social gathering. Okay, <laughs> so I know I covered a lot in both the lists, but I'm hoping I helped give a little further explanation about social etiquette. When it comes to social graces and etiquette, it's important that these things be done. And unfortunately, there's so much rudeness in today's society. There's no manners. I see it every day, almost. If it's not people cutting off people or being nasty with them when they're driving, it's in the stores, it's in the shopping malls. It's just frustrating when you actually see all this stuff go on. When you see all this stuff go on, you sit there and you go, who the hell raised you? <laughs> One recent personal case I want to bring up is when it comes to association, your etiquette should be of this. And I'll give my example here. I do a lot of, I do some online gaming when I have some opportunities. And I had a buddy of mine that I've known for well over a decade that I've been playing with. He's in and out of relationships. It's kind of sad, but I hope the best for him. So he's got himself into a new relationship. Virtual, online, never met type relationship. But... Okay, so anyways, regardless of how much I got to get a chuckle over the whole situation, his new online girlfriend figures that she can actually address me the way that he addressed me. Now, I've known this guy for well over a decade. I cut him some breaks. He's a buddy of mine. We shoot the shit. We, we gab, we, we jab, everything else. But this, because... It's his girlfriend, his virtual online girlfriend. He, she figures that she can speak to me the same way. Well, I put her in their place the other day and set her straight. But, you know, he's still puppy eyed and goo goo gaga and everything else. So he's cause running to his def her defense because, well, he's, you know, he's lonely. And I understand that. But my point is this. Just because of an association with somebody doesn't mean that you could fit into the ranks that they do, okay? Just because you become somebody's girlfriend or boyfriend or partner or whatever, the people that they know or you know, whatever, whichever way it is, there should not be an automatic expectation that's a level playing field that, okay, so you know this person and now I'm involved with you, so that means I can talk to them and deal with them the same way that you do. No, that's not how it works. Read the room, know your social etiquette, realize that you have to earn and build a reputation and earn a relationship with those people. It doesn't mean you're automatically included at the same level. You have to do your time to earn that position with those people that are in your significant other's life. Keep that in mind when you get in a situation like that. Don't automatically think, okay, well, John's going out with Sally and Sally's got all these friends and John's automatically thinking that he can, you know, be the same, act the same way that she does or whatever with friends. No, you can't do that. Know how to read the room. Know about your etiquette. Have some class. Have some manners. Don't be that person. That's on that subject. And that's kind of what brought this today's show topic. 
It speaks volumes when you have social etiquette and social grace. When you have that level of class, it says so much about you in a positive that people will just go in awe going, wow. But when you start doing nasty things, swearing at the mouth, being completely vile and, and gross and all this stuff, like all the negative stuff that for some reason you think is funny or it's, it's, it's just tough or whatever, it's not. It makes you look like an idiot. Try to have some manners. Try to have some etiquette. Try to be some, do some politeness. And again, treat others as you'd like to be treated. And hopefully it's a good, positive way you want to be treated. <laughs> Okay, that's about it today. I want to topic on this. Yeah, crucial social etiquette rules everybody should follow. And we talked about a few of them tonight. So I'm hoping some people have learned. Some people have registered. Some people have been taking some notes. These are some good points. Don't get me wrong. There is more. But just use your common sense. If you've seen it in a movie and it seems classy and it seems slick or however you want to put it, then chances are if you recreate it yourself, you're going to get some really good positive reactions actions speak louder than words my friends all right i'm gonna wrap this up hey i'm your host matt morgan i want to thank you very much for tuning in to get off my soapbox this week keep in mind as i said this is going to be our last week for the video components because as i said that's time consuming and until we get more sponsors and i'm thinking closer to christmas i'm thinking i might take a week or two off at the end of 2022 to spend time with family and everything because that's an uh, important time, especially with the, the end of the year coming into the new year. So I might take the last week or two off, but I'll, I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know in the next week or two whether or not I'm taking the last two weeks off or get off my soapbox. Soapbox Daily, of course, will continue as always. Soapbox Daily, I can pull those off in my sleep. It's not a problem. You can get the link to Soapbox Daily over on getoffmysoapbox.com. So you can catch all the shows over there on your favorite podcast channel and all the social media links from that point forward all right so that is about it for tonight again keep your integrity in check thank you for tuning in i'm your host mad morgan have yourself a good rest of your day see you next episode that's all for this episode of get off my soapbox podcast appreciate you tuning in today if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast please share it with others post it on social media or leave a rating and review to catch all the latest from mad morgan head over to getoffmysoapbox.com for links and details thank, thank, thank you for listening. for listening don't forget to follow so you don't miss the next episode